training video for one of our clients to purchase this trailer. This trailer is designed for fleet washing. The way we set this up is this is going to be the number one machine, which is going to handle all the low pH acidic soap. The other pressure washer on the other side is a number two machine in a two step process. So basically, we have these extremely large high volume injectors on here that is connected to each unit and they work on a downstream injection principle which means you have to put a low pressure tip on the end of the gun which opens up a check valve and allows soap to be drawn. At high pressure it shuts it off. So typically uh, it's a pretty easy process when it comes to working with it. What's nice about this with a two-man team, one of the workers would be applying the one step to a side of a tractor, you say a tractor trailer, normally to the side of the trailer. The other guy followed right behind it within about 20 or 30 seconds. They could hit the number two. So it depends on your dwell time and how dirty the truck is. At that point, um, they can both rinse. So the same thing with the downstream inject with the fluid that they're going to both rinse. Okay, so Uh, yeah, maybe a little bit. So this is a door wand gun. When the gun is closed, the handle is actually a, a valve. When the gun is closed, then it's under high pressure, no so. Then you open the gun up. You open up this extra tube here, which have a low pressure injector. It's not right. Low pressure soap injector in order to inject soap. So basically how it really goes. High pressure soap will come out the yellow nozzle. Or high pressure water, no soap. You might have a little little bit of soap that's still in the line. So it will come out at high pressure for maybe 10 seconds. And then the low pressure nozzle, which is on the end of the gun, so it actually helps both chambers. But when you got soap, soap coming out of both. So when it comes to that, we'll go over the operations of the pressure washers. This is the Honda GX390 pressure washer. I'll, put, I'll show you over here quickly. There's actually a dipstick here. But you can check your engine oil. You normally want it almost to the top of the dip tube here, or dipstick. When you want to change your engine oil, it will actually uh, drain right here. Here's your air filter. This is your muffler, so you got to be careful um, with the muffler that you uh, don't touch that. A lot of times you feel like you want to pull start it. Try to keep your hand off the muffler. It gets extremely hot. These are actually custom built belt drive cats, 2500 PSI at 5 gallon a minute. Actually, this is the perfect pressure for house washing, also. So, this whole setup could be a dual operator house wash system with high volume injection. This happens to be electric start, so you do have a 12 volt battery here. Key start. One of the most important things, especially when you got an electric start, is that. You don't want to crank over the engine under pressure, so you always got to release the pressure on the pressure washer. That's actually the easiest way to do it. Obviously, is to open the trigger gun and start the engine. So we did it. Already checked the oil. We checked the pump oil here with the sight glass. Is the easy, oil level should be even with the center of the sight glass and where the red dot is. You fill the oil here. You also fill the oil where the dipstick is. So that's both ways there. This is the pressure adjustment that is our unloader valve. Supply line, high pressure line, with a high pressure 
or a downstream injector on here. It's a belt driven. You always want a belt drive, low speed pump. You buy a direct drive like a home center pressure washer or just a high speed direct drive. The pump is spinning a million more rotations a day. I don't care if it's your tires or what spins a million more rotations a day. It's going to fail much quicker. This pump can normally last 20 times longer than your economy based high speed direct drive pumps that are bolted to the back of the engine. Stay away from them if you can. I guess it's more expensive, but I got guys that have these units out there for over 10, 15 years and they're still running. Okay, so you got the breakdown on the machine. What we did here too, I'll run through the trailer. We actually have four chemical tanks on this trailer. We actually have two low pH tanks, which are indicated with a blue line. We always use blue here for low pH or acidic cleaners. The red lines are your alkaline cleaners. So this customer can actually have two different soaps may be safe on polish for tractor trailers with polished aluminum. The other one could be more aggressive for heavy duty cleaning. Um, typically this unit's going out with DynaClean. We also have a 535 gallon water tank on here. It's a Tanamax, so super heavy duty trailer. You can tell we kind of go overboard on the trailers because with this is actually a 2 inch by 6 inch box tubing frame even up at the tongue. Heavy duty coupler assembly, heavy duty jack assembly, LED lights. We have large inlet filters on each unit. You can see the large inlet filter, one on each side. Never plumb up two pressure washers off of one pipe or one fitting. They could draw air in the system. I also have a large drain valve. We got two high pressure lines with 200 foot of hose on each uh, for pressure washing. These are the high pressure hose rails. We have a inlet hose rail for free flow because both of those units combined will actually be drawing 10 gallons per minute. We want a one inch hose rail on that. Um, with three quarter inch inlet hose, we got a spare tire, LED lights. And these are all galvanized chrome style rims so they won't rust. Kind of the rundown here, we'll go ahead and fire this up real brief and uh, these things they're shipping in an hour. Turn the Sorry about the moving the camera so much. This right here has a little uh, float ball or a little bowl. You always want to turn your fuel line valve on. You can leave this off over the winter when you're storing it. You have a choke valve here. This is the run position, so it's always going to be run. When you want to choke it, you pull it to the left. Okay, now it's choked. We know the fuel is on. You can keep it at full throttle. This is your throttle control. Normally, you can leave that alone. You don't have to idle down to shut it off. This runs just fine. All right, I'm going to pull this back over here. I'm just going to start the engine. I'm going to pull it even back further to get a better view of the whole system. All right. So we're going to go ahead and fire it up. Remember, if you don't, you burn. 